And on top of the morning, lovers and friends, Technicals Tinkers here checking in on our little 3D print operation for today. I own a business, has nothing to do with 3D printing, but I'm trying this 3D printing thing out to see if maybe there's some opportunity there to make some sales, I'm doing it here at home, fleshing it all out, learning about 3D printing as I go. This is just exhibition, so if you're in a similar boat, you're into 3D printing, want to make some money with it, learn along with me, just you know, join me, it's entertainment, whatever. So what am I working on today? Well, Thanksgiving was yesterday, and so all the printers are pretty quiet. I gotta get them spun back up today, back into the grit, back into the grind, going along, doing the various things. Something exciting happening. We are 54 minutes away from the jawbone section of our giant Tyrannosaurus Rex skull finishing up. All the other printers are quiet. We're working down here on one of our uh, mining stands, the bottom thing. If you saw the video yesterday, it'd be yesterday now, when I was doing the design. Had to, I had a failure on one, so I printed another one. This one, let's just take a look at it. All right, what do we got? So we did this one with brim to help ensure that it came out. It looks good. Brim came off nice and clean too. So our little snap sections here, God, they're so tiny. Um, came out just fine, so if Mr. Customer actually puts his order through, we can go ahead and send that out with him. So that's good there, but I still want to revise that. And that's kind of a great um, sample product to learn a, uh, a CAD program on because it's geometric. It has some precise measurements in it. It's not, there's not too much in the way of like, really trying to think about it because you know what's what and where things have to go so it might give us that a stab and we did sell a hornet nest I did the little packaging montage in the beginning. I'm gonna take a look here at the numbers, do a spot check on the profitability of that order because it's kind of something I like to do, you know, with, I don't know, periodically at least, just to make sure I'm making money on it. I am, but just to kind of see precisely how much money I'm making. And I know that's something that probably a lot of people that are watching or in a similar boat as me, maybe want to see. And so because I sold one of them, I like to keep one in stock. I started it up here on the Soval, but as you can see, Failure, yet again, and why did it fail? Oh, why, you ask? Probably shouldn't do that over top of the Giga. I'm like dropping junk down inside the Giga. So why did it fail? Oh, it looks like it ran out of filament, and it was about, yeah, it was that height, and it was just kind of extruding into nothing, so I left it alone. Oh, wouldn't you know, the hook, the little tiny hook piece got caught in the end of the spool, so how weak is the extruder that it can't pull that out of the roll. How weak is it? Because, I mean, that's just nothing. Huh. So someone mentioned uh, an anti-tangle detector for the Soval SV08. I'm gonna look into that. I'm not sure if it would've, you know, stopped that from happening, but luckily for me, I still got a little bit of gray to burn up here, and I got a whole spool over there. I'm gonna have to order some more, but. I do like to keep one of these in stock uh, because they do take a little while. They don't take as long on the Soval, uh, but again, it's you know good to keep it in stock. But uh, yeah, everything. I actually printed this one with three wall loops too instead of four because I kind of wanted to see. Like I think I can get away with it, and I'm feeling it. You know, once it's whole, I think it won't be any issue. So yeah, but unfortunately, that is destined to go in the ocean. All right, so let's load her up and get her started. So our hornet nest, I'm just gonna put it up right here. Uh, I've done a spot check before. I'm gonna put both of them, the last sample order that I uh, spot checked on this. Uh, so the total revenue comes in, because I do free shipping on these orders, uh, it comes out to 42.27, so you back out the tax, obviously. Uh, that doesn't count. So you're rolling with 39.50. To start with, I'm figuring in 6.5% for Etsy fees. Now it's like a little touch higher. Um, let's just go ahead and uh, figure that in. I'll, I'll revise that. So. 39.5 times uh, 0.1 is, uh, so 395, so a bit more. 
Uh, print cost uh, on this is 515 grams, um, and that's with, let's check it out. I've got it, uh, it's at 515 grams, that's three wall loops um, with 0% infill. And that's figured up at a filament cost of um, uh, 1.2 cents per gram because that, uh, that uh, Elgu high speed rapid PLA, I buy it off of Elgu website and it comes out to like shipped, landed like, uh, it's like $12 per spool. So uh, that's the cost there. Pack cost I'm figuring at three bucks because I, um, I use those two boxes, nest them. Uh, tape and packing peanuts and stuff like that. I'm just figuring it at three bucks. It's probably it's pretty, pretty, pretty close. The ship cost on this one was seventeen sixty eight. And so a lot of people have suggested using Pirate Ship and stuff like that. So the the couple times that I went to Pirate Ship's website uh, and did like a sample order and put in the parameters of whatever I was shipping, it came out to like the exact same cost as Etsy. Uh, but that was for big shipments. So I think there might be some room to run down there if I use uh, Pirate Ship for a lot of the smaller things like this order in particular. So maybe shave a couple bucks off of that. I did ship this UPS because USPS was like eighteen fifty or something like that. So it's about a dollar cheaper for UPS and UPS opens earlier. So that's good for me because I operate pretty early. Uh, that th the size of that package won't fit into the little bin thing, so I have to actually take it in. So I'll take that to UPS. Uh, so our total cost coming out to 3081, uh, which is a 869 rip on the uh, Hornet Nest itself. I'd like it to be a little more. I'd like at least like a ten dollar rip on these, but uh, again, you know, pretty low volume, and you know, I could probably massage down costs in a few places, mainly the shipping cost. You know, not really the packing cost, I don't think, because, you know, uh, hey, where am I really going to remove stuff there? You know, I could use paper packing or something like that, but, you know, peanuts are a little, hmm, I think a little better for this type of product. Honestly, I don't even think it needed pa uh, packing material around it. The thing is pretty robust. Uh, but overall, $8.69 on that order, so it doesn't seem like a lot, but hey, every little bit helps. All right, and so for the remainder of the day, I'm going to give uh, the time, the job on time to come together, and then when we do our midday update, it should be done. Hopefully, I'll be able to snap it into place without breaking it, and uh, hopefully, I'll be ha having some other stuff started to print by then to where I actually have something to talk about. All right, just finished up. Bed's still a little warm, but come on, baby. All right, I'm going to let it cool down. All right, Thanksgiving turkey served as well. All right, jawbone popped it off the plate. Didn't record that part. The teeth came out fine. Didn't really expect any issues, you know, based on just kind of looking at the model. The brim was a little attachy. I uh, just used a deburring tool to uh, take that down. But otherwise, you know, let's check the overhangs here. Feels pretty solid. I mean, it's a little creaky when I squeeze it. So maybe some... Like that's infill, I think, more than anything. It's pretty light infill. Right here we're joined together a little, a little sus, but nothing really. I mean, uh, it's looking pretty good. I almost don't want to swap out the nozzle on this thing, but let's see if we can pop it into the big part over here. Here goes nothing. Oh dear. I don't know. So I'm not sure if that picked up on audio, but you could hear the cracking on the inside. I think it's the infill. It sounded like the infill separating from the wall because it doesn't show any signs of like exterior issue. So it's probably just uh, you know a few lines of infill cracking and bobbing and weaving. It doesn't really articulate. It's, I think it's more just to keep it upright, but there it is. Holy Toledo. If I get a head for scale in here. Head for scale. You know, I'm gonna have to redo that for the thumbnail. <laughs> but uh, yeah, pretty impressive. Let's go Giga. So let's uh, we'll see how much filament this actually took. All right, so over here in my Orca, uh, gonna slice it up and we'll tally up how much filament this thing took. I haven't made any changes to it, so I forget. I'm gonna guess this is probably, maybe it doesn't seem like that many, maybe, um, Maybe five or six spools. All right, come on, come on. Uh, OBS. Oh, I'm running. I'm running AnyCubic next. Bamboo Handy, my film editor. OBS and this, and I'm slicing. So that 9950X coming in handy. I guess. I guess. I'm looking a little grainy. I still got 60 frames. All right, so uh, we'll write this down. 
I got a pen here. Looks like the T-Rex skull came out to 4224. So a little over four spools for the main part, like 20 chrome tabs open as well. All right, 1881. Grand total is 4224 plus 1881. 6105. So just over six spools of filament. Let's check and see how much I paid for them. All right, so I'm just going to use a screenshot right here because uh, Amazon's got like my name and address everywhere. I mean, you ever, probably I'm not that hard to find, uh, but I did get this. This is the Rapid PLA Plus. So I didn't get this off. No fib in here. I didn't get it off Elegoo's website because if you remember back when I started the print, um, I was like, oh, I can't wait. You know, I need it now because I thought I was going to run out because I had just gotten the Giga and I just kind of committed to white. Uh, so I did get it on Amazon. It is cheaper on Elegoo's website. And if you want to buy anything from Elegoo, uh, use my link. It's in the description below. I get a commission if you use my link. Uh, you don't pay any more, uh, but I'd get a, a little commission. So it's like, you know, why, why wouldn't you use the link? You're getting some entertainment value out of this, aren't you? But since I'm not fibbing, I, you know, was impatient and ordered it off Amazon for 45 over four spools, which comes to eleven twenty-five per spool. Which, oddly enough, if you buy it on Elegoo's website, you, if you get ten spools of the white, it comes out to eleven fifty. But they're currently sold out anyway. Um, it looks like maybe it was on sale uh, for less. I'm not sure. Uh, well, the black is one hundred nine ninety-nine. But anyway, I got it on Amazon here uh, for forty-five bucks for four spools. So eleven twenty-five per spool is one point one two cents per gram. And we multiply that by, I've already, I didn't write down the 1125 per gram. Remember that. Time, 0.01125. 6868 is our filament cost for the T Rex skull. All right, 6868. And let's say, let's just say it burned uh, 500 watts for six days. Right, let's say it burned 500 watts times 24 hours a day divided by 1,000 times 0.07 to uh, five, which is my power rate. So 87 cents per day times six days. So another 522 in power costs plus 6868 gives us 7390. That's there any other associated printing costs. We didn't have any, um, any failures or testing that we did with it that we can factor in, but let's just keep it a little more true to form. 7390 uh, is the cost to print it. All right, so it's a 36, 24, 30. Thanks. Uh, 36 plus 24 plus 30. So we're at 90. We get 105 before we go into oversized shipping. So I could squeeze out an additional, what, 105, 15. I can squeeze out an additional five to the dimensions around everything. Yeah, I could put like two inches of padding all the way around it and then just like stuff the mouth full of it, wrap it full of bubble. I think maybe I could get away with it. Um, let's, uh, you know what I think I'm going to have to do, and maybe this is something for a future episode, is I I package it. Uh, I take a bunch of pictures of it, um, and then just go ahead and package it, and then just go price it from there um, before, I, before I even list it. And that's kind of maybe because of how I'm going to derive the price, because if I can fit this into underneath oversized, then that's maybe... Maybe like eighty dollars, eighty ninety dollars to ship this thing, uh, but just going over that one extra inch, uh, I'm looking at probably two fifty something like that in, in order to ship this thing because it doesn't really weigh a whole lot. I, well, I mean it weighs what uh, six kids, yeah, so fifteen pounds roughly, uh, so it doesn't weigh a whole lot. The the packing material will add another five six pounds to it, uh, so not too heavy but big. Um, so I think that's really going to be the crux of uh, whether or not I'm able you know, how I'm going to be able to price this thing. Uh, I'm not going to do any cleanup to it. I'm not going to put any paint on it because it's that white. Um, the layer lines, you can see the layer lines in some places, but overall, I'm not too worried about it. So uh, that's how much it costs to print an enormous T-Rex skull. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, if you think based on those dimensions, you can get away with, I don't say get away with, but, uh, you know, you can probably get it into a, sh a box uh, and, and chip it for less. I think I might have to pull the M3 move where I buy Lowe's boxes because they are heavy duty. I just buy two of them and uh, mate them, join them together, uh, and then kind of slide it to fit. And then like maybe I can't staple it, but you know, kind of join it together some way. Maybe put like a uh, a length of like a stick, like a piece of wood, like a furring strip uh, on the inside and tack it in uh, just to keep it super rigid. Uh, and then just fill it to the brim with uh, packing material and squeeze the dog shit out of it with tape.
Uh, so that's my plan currently. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Or do you think I should just swing for the fences, list it for a thousand bucks and see if I get any bites because I think maybe someone will pay it because this thing is super big. This is certainly larger. Uh, I mean, you, if you could print this in parts on a bunch of smaller 3D printers, but your time is going to go through the roof. And I know there are a lot of people out there that don't mind the time. It's a labor of love. Uh, but I price my time high. I got a million other things going on and I just, uh, you know, I'm not, I don't drive enjoyment from assembling art and putting it together. I kind of want to stamp it out. So this is really appealing to me. Um, but I think if, uh, if I could turn, if I could turn like, I'd be happy with like 500 in profit out of this thing. So maybe coming in less than a thousand dollars, but we'll see. So I think maybe that's on the docket for the next couple days is, um, to take pictures of this thing and list it or package it up first and then list it and see what I can get out of it. Appreciate all the comments, suggestions, and feedback and everybody watching the videos. I think we're probably be at 2,000 subscribers by the time this video comes out tomorrow on Saturday. Uh, so that engages and we'll probably be looking to do our, uh, our next filament giveaway, maybe Monday, maybe Sunday. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Should I give away more filament or maybe something else? Maybe wait until 3,000 subscribers and give like an A1 mini or something like that because that's getting to be uh, kind of the, the point where I could give away something like that too. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Be sure to like the video because it's a nice thing to do and subscribe for more content like this. I'm The Technicals. See you next time.